Star Wars Squadrons is getting not one, but two updates. In them, we're going to see new components, a new map, custom private matches, and yes, two new starfighters, the B-Wing and the TIE Defender. It's happening, so let's dive in. The first update is only a week away, coming out on November 25th. Fostar Haven will be released as a multiplayer map, which you might recognize as the prologue map for the single-player story mode. This is an interesting one, kind of a mix between the Yavin map and Nadiri Dockyards. One side will be pretty much open space, and the other will have some structures to weave in and out of. The November update will come with four new components as well. The boost extension kit will allow you to have a boost in reserve, I assume without charging your engines, but once used it will of course have to recharge as well. Ion rockets are similar to the standard rockets interceptors currently have, projectiles fired straight ahead with no lock, but these will do more damage to subsystems and shields. Prototype piercing torpedoes do less damage than a standard proton torpedo, but they'll be able to go straight through enemy shields. And finally, the anti-material rocket turret is for support ships and will auto-lock onto capital and flagship systems and turrets. But the December update is going to be the big one, the literal game changer. First, we're getting the much requested B-Wing and TIE Defender added to the roster of ships. I've been wondering how they would classify these new ships, and I assumed we'd get a new classification, but no. The B-Wing will be a bomber, which makes sense, and the Defender will be a fighter, which also makes sense. That'll be interesting when it comes to the balance of the game, but the official pilot briefing assures us that balance has very much been taken into consideration when it comes to these ships. They're being tight-lipped about the details at this moment, but they say there is still a time and a place to use a B-Wing. It's not better than a Y-Wing by default, and the same goes for the Defender and the TIE Fighter. Each ship will have its own unique features and new components as well. And along with the new ships, the second update will provide us with custom matches. This is huge. I've personally taken part in two fan-created tournaments for Squadrons, Operation Ace, which we won, and Creator Clash, which we did not. The pilot briefing makes special mention of the fan-run events that have been popping up, and I think they recognize how good they can be for the longevity of the game, because now they're going to be much easier to put together. Again, not all the details have been revealed yet, but you can create matches with 1-5 to five players on each side for all maps on both fleet battles and dogfight modes. There will be additional restrictions or modifications match creators can make, and even more tools they aren't mentioning yet. The update will also give us a server browser to find matches made by friends, or public matches. So that's basically the dream update for this game. Since day one, fans, including myself, have been asking about ongoing support for squadrons. New ships, new maps, etc. And the answer was always, there are no current plans, but if support for the game is strong, then never say never. Well, it sounds like support was strong enough. The pilot briefing is actually very nice if you haven't read it, but I am thrilled to have more content to keep my excitement for Squadrons going, and to hopefully win some more tournaments in the near future. Are you more looking forward to the Defender or the B-Wing? Let me know what you're most excited about in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.